end well it cost me um £1,046.50 we've got a bit of a problem here someone's been playing Pete's just had a look that is suspension component excessively corroded so I'll take the thermostat out to make it work better and into the system so fingers crossed it doesn't turn come on Firebird so welcome back to Chops Garage, the real life car trading channel. In the last video, we were speaking about this Vito. Hopefully it was the last video. We're speaking about this Vito where I sent it out the door and the customer called about half an hour later, broken down on the side of the road. Well, not actually broken down. They were still able to drive, but they stopped because a light came on to say that the uh, vehicle had an oil problem, which we determined from distance to be overfilling because we'd only just completed the service on it. A bit more research said on these, you want to leave it about halfway up the dipstick rather than full. Otherwise, once they warm up, they throw a light to say they are overfilled. The customer drove the car back and by the time they got here, the light had gone from red to orange to say that it was just needed its oil level checking. Checked it, as I said, it was overfilled. Customer wanted to be 100% sure that's what it was, so they left the van with us, went home, and um, I then dropped some oil out of it, and I've done two more test drives since over the course of two days, about half hour each, just to double check the light didn't come back on again, and it hasn't, so I think we've nailed that. So we've given the van a wash, I've filled the tank up, which cost me more than I want to say. Well, it was 100 quid to fill the tank up on it to cover their cost of coming back and forth because it was our daft mistake. Bung them a message and they're, they're happy they're on their way to pick it up. But speaking of warranty claims, we've got another one that a lot of you have been asking about because I haven't covered it since, is the, well, I'll show you what's back and you'll know what car warranty claim has been sorted. My favorite little car's back. I'm gonna have this for ages, isn't my little Suzuki Swift Sport I lent out as a loan car for a warranty claim. And it's taken a long while. I've had the car all that time. I'm looking forward to getting in and driving this car around. Those who don't watch the channel very regularly won't know that this is probably my favorite car of all the tons and tons of cars I've had, very high-end stuff. I love getting this little Suzuki Swift and bombing around. But I had to loan it out because the car was gone in the end for, I wanna say two months, but it might've been longer than that. It was the BMW 1 Series. I'll try and insert a photo now. That was the car that my friend bought from me, had for seven months, and it started making a rattling noise in the engine bay. Which we determined to be a timing chain issue because those BMW diesels are renowned for timing chains. Went down with the Moors boys. They had it for a, a while, for a few weeks, and then said, look, to be honest, we're not gonna get around to doing it, so I had to find somewhere else. I was recommended Gaydon Motors in Barnstable as a company that have done a number of these. Gave him a ring, he said he knew his stuff. He was like, yeah, no problem at all, but I'm booked up, so I can't do it for a number of weeks. Spoke to my friend who, friend stroke customer, and said, look, this guy knows what he's talking about. He's, off, he's given a really reasonable price for doing it and we might have to wait a few weeks but it might be worth going with him because at least we're booked in solid rather than trying to find somewhere else and he agreed so he's been bombing around in the swift since then yesterday i got a call to say the car was done and um and he has swapped it out and got his swift back and didn't get any footage of it but i have got the bill so just to recap with this one the car was seven months old and the timing chain started to rattle now under consumer law after seven after six months it is down to the consumer to prove it was a fault at point of sale. Now, with this being a, what was it, a 2000? I've shown you the picture, but I don't know what the car was. Was it 2011? 100,000 miles? Timing chain does become fair wear and tear. They don't last forever. They really are like cam belts and need to be done every now and then, just maybe not as often as a cam belt. So then there was no proof there was a fault at point of sale. So theoretically, I didn't really need to do much. Um, but obviously this guy's had a number of cars off me as a friend and even if he wasn't a friend at that time that I would want to try and help somebody out as much as I could probably done some some deal on getting it done anyway I've got the bill from Gaiden Motors here um, you all wanted to know how much it cost me and how did it end up in the end well it cost me um, £1,046.50 uh, £872 without the VAT, which I think is actually quite reasonable because the engine has to come out. The reason it's such a costly job is the engine has to come out of the BMWs to do it. Something like this Swift, it's on the side and you can just drop the engine mount and do it on the side, but BMW decided to put it at the back of the engine. So the engine and gearbox has to come out. So 
to do that and also um, put new injector seals in oil filter so they did a, a full um, service on it as well as putting a full new timing kit in it I think is a reasonable thing to do to be honest it had stretched its timing chain not broken it so that's why the car was still driving okay and hadn't yet had any lights on the dashboard presumably the stretch wasn't enough to set off the timing light on the dashboard if they've got a warning for that so I thought that was actually a reasonable, a really reasonable price for the Gaiden Motors guys. So I, I really appreciate that. Many thanks to them. Now, what are we going to do with the cost of that? Am I swallowing the whole lot? Well, no, I've had a chat with my friend and I, we've agreed that basically the oil and filters is a service that was coming due anyway because it'd have only been a couple of months off having oil and filter service done anyway. So that element of it realistically is, um, is something he'd have had to do anyway so we're knocking that bit off and, and on that bill if you are counting the labor on it it's probably a couple hundred quids worth uh off the bill 150 quid off the bill uh i think what we settled at the moment is I'm, he's going to give me sort of like 350 quid i think a bit towards the timing chain side of things so i'm eating the majority of it um but he's paying a good proportion of it too and i'm happy with that he seems to be happy with that and i think um, it's probably the fair and right thing to do. Had it been a customer, I probably would have, uh, another customer, I probably again would have helped him out with something towards the cost. But um, it is, again, we do have to be aware that when you buy something of that age and that mileage, there is a risk you're going to have to do repairs like that. And, and, and no dealer out there can totally insulate you from you for the five or six hundred pounds you pay more for a car from a dealer versus a private seller. But this is exactly why I say to you guys when I talk about. Um, channels put out the profit margin they've made when they've sold a car if they're a proper dealership and they're selling cars properly with warranties and so forth excuse the compressor no one can tell you what profit they've made on a car until a long long period of time has um has passed because they never know what they might end up having to pay out themselves i mean even something like the mercedes although it's not physically costing it in terms of the repair because we're just letting a bit of oil out you know, I've had to sort of cover their transport costs back and forth. So there's another hundred out the pot on that one. So you never really know what you made out of the car. If you want to know that, the truthful figure, you have to come back to a dealer after about a year to find out. And it could even be longer than that because we've known some dealers had to pay out for repairs on cars well after a year as well. Anyway, let's crack on. What else have we been up to? Another job I didn't fancy. He spotted when he was playing around with Twingo the other day that the fan inside the car didn't work on any setting. So this is obviously been MOT'd, serviced, um, all of that kind of stuff, detailed and photographed. But these things are easy to miss when you're not trying every knob and switch like Petey likes to. So uh, he found that it wasn't working at all, which is a nightmare because it lives right in underneath the dash. And some people say it is a dash out job. We're going to try without. We found a video. We Pete's going to try without. Found a video online uh, that where someone got it out. So uh, he's got the centre console out. He's got the bit from underneath. He's got a bit out from on top. He's going to see if he can get the fan out without actually having to um, without having to take the dash out. The fact that it's not blowing on any setting means we think the fan's dead. If it was the resistor, it would blow on the top setting. But it's just another one of those things when you buy these cars, unless you're using them every day, you don't pick up on some of this stuff. Obviously, it's more cost. We're getting into some money with this car now. There's very little margin left in it after the big MOT session it had as well. So hopefully it will be popular because it is a properly sorted one, like really properly sorted. Again, buy it from a private seller and find something like that out to a garage and they wanted to do the work then they'd probably charge you for dash out obviously unless you decided you were going to try and do it yourself like pt and you could have been in for probably six hours eight hours labor plus the parts you'd you'd have well what would you be four five hundred pound bill not nice at all so pt's got the fan out of the uh rs twingo and uh he wants double bubble because he's cut his hand. So if anybody's in HR, can you advise me down below? Is, is he got a claim there or not? <laughs> he's going to plug it in and see if that's working. So we can, we don't think it's the resistor because it's, it's like I said, is blowing on, uh, on, it's not blowing on any setting. If it was blowing on just the top setting, then it'd be the resistor. But bless him, he's been fighting to get that out of the dash. Right, we've got a bit of a problem here. Someone's been playing. Pete says that, look, that is actually where the resistor lives. If you can see, you've got a load of bullet connectors just here that have been crimped together with electrical tape on. Someone snipped two of the wires to the resistor down here. I don't know what the reasoning would be for why you would do that. Pete thinks possibly to keep it on four. We don't know. Luckily, we've got a new resistor with new wiring. 
The twin goes back in the showroom because two glasses, Pete has sorted out the heater issue. It turned out that it wasn't the motor. So after buying the motor and taking all the time and trouble to get the motor out, it turned out it was just the resistor. Uh, but obviously we had to get a lot out to get to the resistor. That wiring, it turns out, also was quite a standard thing for aftermarket resistors. If you look up aftermarket resistors for these cars, that purple wiring is a standard one that comes with them. You're supposed to clip the wires and plug it all in. So we got another aftermarket one with a similar wiring kit. Swap that over and it works as a treat. I do think it got Pete to three glasses at some point because it was very tricky and fiddly, but he did enjoy himself rolling around in the, in the uh, footwell. So that's sorted. That's great because that would have held up a retail sale of that car. And uh, well, again, I think this one is again, I think something's coming to the new year when the weather starts to get a bit better, people start treating themselves to toys. It will, uh, it will go well. The Suzuki Swift with the new roof on it has been photographed and videoed today. I didn't realise, I went looking through everything again on the paper. I mean, obviously it's come out fantastic. Now it's had a ceramic coating as well. We've done the walk around video on it. The thing is mint, to be fair, apart from a little bit of lacquer peel on some of the alloys, it is mint. But I never really, this thing has never failed an MOT in its entire life. It's never failed an MOT. And the only advisor it ever had was for a tyre. It's only ever had one advisory on all its MOT, so never failed one. Only ever had one advisory, and that was for a tyre. So I looked up on Auto Trader what the value of this was, and um, it's actually six and a half grand is what the value of this is with the miles on thirty two thousand miles. So again, I've put it up on Auto Trader at that. No, actually, no. Tell, you, tell the light it was six eight. I'm always a little bit under Auto Trader, aren't I? So I put it up at six and a half. But again, my reasoning for that is. Where are you going to find another one in this condition with that kind of history? <laughs> Again, the auto trader is taking an average across the country, but you know if you go and look at the other ones priced the same with the same mileage on, they're not necessarily going to be or very unlikely to be in this kind of condition. So I need to be a bit careful with that auto trader valuation because uh, there's no real way of communicating on auto trader why your car is that much better than others other than doing your videos. So you must do your videos. I've done a real in-depth video of it to go along with the advert. It's that time of year again where I like to go around and sat in the car writing cards and buying chocolates. Uh, go around and uh, thank everybody for the help over the year. Last year, um, I gave those helped me the most cash tips, but I was told by my accountant that I couldn't account for that. So this year we're doing shopping vouchers instead. Um, and then they can get what they want, can't they? But yeah, you need to, this time of year, you need to make sure you, you go around and recognise all the people that have helped you get on in the year. Right, so we've got the little Honda Jazz in. Our only concern with the Honda Jazz is that the heater blows hot and cold. Uh, as in, when you've got it on hot, some of the heat comes through and then it gets cold again. Which could be an airlock or it could be something more serious. Could be head gasket. Never heard of that on a Jazz. We're hoping it's just an airlock, but we're going to check it. We're going to give it a sniff test with a head gasket test. This kit costs like £30. Um, we'll get temperature up on the car, pump this. And if it turns yellow, I believe it is, or green, then um, we've got uh, coolant getting into the... Well, we've got air getting into the system. Yeah. Yeah, air, that's it. Yeah, compressed air from the exhaust air getting into the system. So, fingers crossed it doesn't turn. Yeah. So, Pete, he's got it in the top of the radiator there. He's giving it a pump. And uh, we're not seeing any change in the colour of the fluid at the moment. So it's not turning any colour other than blue at the moment, which is the colour it starts out, which indicates no mixing at the moment. Could be run airlock in the system. The really funny thing is the fan keeps kicking in for a second or two. I'm not sure what that's about, but we're going to leave it running with the cap off and see if we start bleeding air out or not. There we go, fan's going again for a second or two. And the vehicle's not got up to temperature yet. We're only getting cool air through the fan, we're not getting any temperature. Occasionally we get a little waft of temp and then it goes again. We're thinking possibly heater matrix now. Now even if you watch the channel regularly, you could be forgiven for having forgot I had a black mocha because I almost forgot I had a black mocha. I've just picked it up from Moors. Now if you remember, this is a car I picked up from the main dealership. It's a 66 plate with 50,000 miles, I think 55,000 miles on it with a 1.4 petrol in it. Super clean car, full service history, everything was right about it, apart from the fact that when the custom part exchanged it, the engine was vibrating quite badly in the engine bay. And what we found was that someone at some point had done some form of maintenance on it and threaded two of the three bolts that uh, fixed the engine mount to the block of the engine. 
so it couldn't be sold as it was obviously and i gave it to the moors boys and said look can you see what you can do about it and it's been sat in the corner for a while being pushed to the back of the queue but it's finally been done i've just gone and picked it up and uh it wasn't cheap <laughs> so what the boys had to do was uh lower the engine down and drill out heli coil and re-tap a lower one and then lift the engine up and do the same at the top so basically if you don't know what heli coil is it's like an insert you drill a bigger hole in where the where the threaded section was going in you screw them on these heli coils and then you re-tap it so it's got the full three bolts on it again it's fully fitted properly but the issue was in order to do that they had to take the timing chain cover off and the timing chain off so while they're in that, they did water pump, time and chain, tensioners, and of course then you're not going to do the not not do the oil and filters on it. So it's had the oil and filters, the time and chain done, it's had those bolt holes fitted on it. Then of course it needed an MOT because it was out of MOT, so that's been done. So the bill on this one was 750 quid. 750 quid. I suppose at the end of the day, if you think that also includes VAT, so realistically it's sort of like 600 quid. And then my oh, wife, I hope you're saying quid. She doesn't like it. £600. And that includes an oil and filter service, which would normally be about £100. It includes the MOT, which I normally end up spending a couple hundred quid on MOT anyway. So the actual doing of the timing chain and the uh, water pump and doing those bolt holes, they, they haven't really charged me badly at all. But obviously, it's a whole chunk of change to be put into the car. Now it needs obviously the mother of all cleans from sitting around. It didn't need any paint this one. It's just absolutely filthy from sitting about. I remember it being super clean when it was cleaned up. And then whoever buys it will obviously be getting, well, they'll be getting a really well prepped out car, aren't they? That's, I don't think they'll have to do another time and chain on this. I wouldn't have thought until it's over 100,000 miles. They're not going to have to service it for a year. It's got advisory free MOT, of course. That element, the MOT, actually passed straight through the MOT, didn't need anything at all. So that's why, again, it kept the build down a bit on it. And obviously it's had all new fresh antifreeze and stuff as well. So yeah, it all set to go. It just needs, like I say, a really good valet. It needs to join the queue of cars that need a valet. Picked up a couple of other bills down there while I was down there for um, customers that had little bits and bobs done. So we sold a white uh, Toyota Yaris, didn't we? White Toyota Yaris. Uh, a month or so ago, the air con wasn't blowing cold for him, so that's been regassed as we speak. They charged me for that. And then there was another car. Who was it? Somebody, I don't know if they broke or I don't know what happened, but basically they rang up and said they couldn't get into the bonnet because the handle would come off in the in the foot in the footwell there. Which car was that? I can't remember which car that was. Um, that may be in the same chat with the white Yaris, I think. Um, they only charged me about 20 quid for fixing that. I think you just needed to clip him back in again. So a couple of small things. I mean, it could have been ham-fisted, done through. Uh, is ham-fistry a word? No, I don't think it is. It could have just been done by someone being a bit over it. Over, um, what am I trying to say? It could have been done by someone just grabbing at it too hard, basically. But we'll, we'll never know, really. For that kind of charge, it's customer service-wise, just worth getting it done and moving on, isn't it? So yeah, really nicely stocked up with 4x4s for the right time of year, actually. I've got this one. I've got the Cougar, which I've done nothing with. That needs to be cleaned and photographed. I've got this one when we get around doing the bonnet on it. That's a, a nice little 4 by 4 to have. I've got the X-Trail. I've got the Qashqai. And I've got the Duke. I know they're not 4 by 4s but they're the kind of sort of vehicle people look out for in this area. They're sort of lifted up 4 by 4 style vehicles. So it is the right type of cars to have this time of year. But we'll see if anybody's spending come January. So, back on the jazz, trying to find out why the heater is blown hot and cold. And just flushed out the um, heater matrix, which seemed to be free. And I said, well, let's stick the thermostat in anyway. Petey's just taken the thermostat housing off, and there's no thermostat in the engine, which has got us wondering what is going on. Someone has actually removed the thermostat. So, did they do that? when they started to have a problem with the heater not working or did they do that when they started to have a problem with the engine overheating well we're about to find out we'll stick the new thermostat in we'll get it up to temperature and we'll see what happens and both pete and i have said we've been looking online we've been chatting about it we've never known one of these do a head gasket but never say never you don't know do you so new thermostat is in 
and we have consistent hot air in the cabin which I guess is no surprise now that we found it had no thermostat but we want to know what the engine temperature is and typical of a lot of the more modern stuff well not that one I guess but it's got no temperature gauge it'll only give us blue when it's cold and red when it's too hot and normally that means it's gone too far so we're going to plug the top don in go into live data and read what the actual engine temperature is and see where it's going it's interesting because this bit here the engine's really clean as well it's got some kind of like core plug type thing put in the side of it i don't know if it's had a head gasket job done i don't think it has i don't think it i just never known one of these have a problem like that we'll never find out what the true story is i guess so Pete's grabbed his favourite, which is the 900. That's that's the one. That's Pete's one of choice from the Top Don range. Yeah, um, he's found the VIN number, no problem at all. So he's going to uh, and get into live data, like I say, and we'll be able to see what the, the engine temperature is. Focus. Right, so we've got the engine temperatures here, and um, it all seems good. 81, what's the what engine? What's the one's that, Pete? That's the, That'll be the first one on the engine. That'll be the second one. That's yeah changes when it uh, so and it's been sitting here for a while now hasn't it it's definitely not overheating. doesn't seem to be overheating at all so like i said i don't think we're ever going to know why someone took the thermostat out now perhaps it was an attempt to get the heater working properly i don't know perhaps they had an airlock and someone thought i'll take the thermostat out to make it work better and and when we started fiddling around and doing the coolant, we got rid of the airlock, popped the new thermos there back in and it worked. I don't know. Comment down below if you've got any idea what's been going on with this. Judgment day for the little Honda Jazz. If you remember, we took this in part exchange for just a few hundred pounds. We were told it was going to fail its next MOT due to rust underneath and we got wanted to have a look at it, get it on the ramp and check out what was what. Well, as you remember, if you watched the channel before, Pete, you found that it was just surface rust. So it was all wire brushed down. It was coated with uh, a converter and then some stone chip. So we're now going to take it in for MOT and see how it really does get on an MOT or not because we've got a friend that wants a cheap little motor, haven't we? And just for a bit of fun, we think it's 148,000 miles. We think we'll, um... oh, it's dead as a dodo. We better get a jump pack on it. Good job that in the post a couple of days ago, Top Don have sent me out their new jump pack. Good opportunity to show you the new jump pack that Top Don has sent me out. So you know I've got the 1200 and the 12 and the 2000. Well, they've sent me out the 3000. Excuse the trucks in the background. Yeah, they've sent me out the 3000, which is the biggest jump pack they do. Now this one um, will start a 9 litre petrol and a 7 litre diesel. It has uh, short circuit protection, reverse polarity protection, so if you put things the wrong way around on it, it'll uh, get you out of trouble on that, over temperature and over voltage. It's, um, it'll charge your phone from 0 to 80% in 30 minutes. It's got the LED light on the end like the others have as well, but an even bigger one. So yeah, we'll see if this bad boy is straight out of the box, so I don't know how much charge it's got in it. it. wants to stay on the pipe there. I don't know how much charge it actually has in it try and do this one-handed I keep dropping one of the one of the handles down the engine bay we've only got a tiny battery but it is dead dead it's not even really trying to start at the moment is it so let's get this on here double check I have got it the right way around and rather the pack didn't have to save me how much power has it got on it oh, I was already showing it's hundred percent and it's gone into boost where it's going to feed the battery some charge before we start it let's see but well, let's not give it any opportunity to do that at all Let's give it a proper test and see if it will start. I haven't been on there for a few seconds or not. Straight. It's not the biggest of challenges for something that big, but um, in terms of a battery pack and it's quite a small engine, but there's plenty of jump packs out there I've used that you need to set it, let it sit in there for a while to feed that with power before it would start. Quite good if you go camping and stuff like that to have one this big, because you could charge multiple devices off it, couldn't you? But if you're out and about doing a bit of car flipping and you're picking up various motors um, and you could be using it multiple times through the day, one of these bigger ones might be worth the extra cash. Another one's dead. We want to move the Jazz out. And the Firebird is a, uh, a no-go to 
many short moves. So let's really put this to the test. It says, the Top Don 3000 says, it will do uh, petrol engines up to seven liters, won't it? So let's put that to the actual test. So there it is, 6.6 .6 litre V8, dead battery, it's at 75%, it's throwing some charge in there. Will it start it up? That is the question. Let's make sure it's definitely in park, otherwise we'll be taking Pete out and the little Honda Jazz. Yes it is. Right, come on Firebird. Oh, there you have it! There's no doubt that started. Now all this moving about is to get the Ital in and the Ital has also been sat for a donkey's age. So should we see how the battery is on this? And I think we may have rubbed one out of this to get the Saab going the other day. So it may well be we do have an absolutely dead battery and we'll have to call on the 3000. Full choke I think and it was a couple of blips of the throttle I think it was that this one likes. Oh, look at that, of all the cars, the Ital starts on the button. There we go. Right, well, let's get her in on the ramp. And now it's jumped the Duke as well because I left the lights on inside the car. The trouble with all this keyless stuff is I carry the bundle of keys around and I leave them at my desk and lights turn on inside the car and they stay on overnight. So. That's another car jumped off of it. So Top Don have got an offer on at the moment where this is down from 139 to 117 pounds. I'll put a link in the video description down below, but act quickly, it's a limited special offer. So down from 139 to 117, link is in the video description down below. So Jazz is back from MOT. What is the score? Here's the sheet and it is a fail. Uh, we've got stop lamp, uh, seat belt anchorage, suspension component excessively corroded, suspension component uh, uh, corroded, top mount, top mount, parking brake. He says that he needs a caliper actually. So we must have missed something when we were underneath there. Didn't dig hard enough maybe. Apparently did have to have quite a dig with the old screwdriver for to find those holes but it seems we got it wrong and we wasted our time wire brushing and painting the underside of the car because that is too much work for a car of this value. If you're doing it at home yourself, it'd be all right. But for me, by the time I paid the labor and for the parts, oh, I'm gonna be another three or 400 pound into this. It owes me about 300 pound plus what we put into it now. So seven, we'll be at like 900,000 pound into a car and I just, that's worth what, 1200 quid? And then you still got the risk of warranty claims. And this is why, as a dealer, you bail on cars like this. And this is why when people park exchange them, you have to really give scrap money because you just can't afford to do the work needed to get these advisory free or even a decent MOT on them. Sell them and make money because we don't know what else might happen with this car after it starts getting used a bit. So unfortunately, it's a big <laughs> for the jazz. I've wasted a few quid um, getting paint on it, stone chipping it and getting it MOT'd. I say probably about another 120 quid I'd say I wasted on it so I just have to take a bit of a hit with the scrap man now and get shot. Another car that's been off for its MOT is the little automatic course that Pete did the head on and I'm pleased to say it is passed advisory free. It's advisory free because we did get a tyre change before we took it and we saw a bulge in the tyre so we got the tyre done and Pete is now moved into valeting mode. He's going to give it a good clean up. Hopefully we can photograph that later in the day. That will be going up at 3995 automatic course. Uh, was it 57 plate with about 70,000 miles on? It's when we've cleaned it up, we'll do another picture because that's going to come up super clean because a customer um, paid a paint shop to do some work on it when she had some scrapes and then she had, yeah, so she, it was mint and she just lost heart when it did its head gasket. So I think that's going to come up pretty mint. While he's been doing that, I have um, sold the Nissan Duke to one of our subscribers. Again, didn't ask permission to use the name, so I'll just say many thanks for that. Um, they had an unfortunate situation with a crap block on their Suzuki. So they needed a needed a replacement car. 
and spotted the Duke on one of the videos. And they're local, they only live down the road, so they popped out for a little test drive. We are just going to pull it in and just need to adjust the fan belt that's squeaking a little bit. Oh, alternator belt. And uh, service it. And I think, actually thinking about it, I think Petey serviced it when we got it ready. So I'll just go and get my receipts and check if we've got the service kit receipt for that. So that's going out the door, putting a 12 month warranty on that one with warranty wise, because they're giving a decent level of cover on that one. So, and it's got a full service history. So there'll be uh, no, no skipping out on it if there's any, any problems. So we're doing a, a warranty wise cover on that one. So uh, we also have sold the Twingo RS. We did a late night deal last night. Apologize for streaming in the background. Uh, well, again, another one of our subscribers came down late last night, drove all the way from London, started off about two o'clock in the afternoon. So I hung on for them. And they have bought the Twingo RS, came down in a beautiful Rover 75 with only 19, I think it was 19,000 miles on it. Uh, but the trouble with that is because the miles are so low and it's in such good condition, he doesn't want to use it too much and needs another toy. So he spotted the Renault Sport Twingo on the channel and he's popped down and purchased that. We need to do a little video for someone on the Honda Jazz Automatic as well, another subscriber that would like to uh, look at buying the Honda Jazz. But I said, look, hang fire until we've done a walk around video for you. And I'll stop there because the streamer's getting closer. <laughs> well, for the first time I can remember in a long while, I opted not to take the Range Rover home last night, which I have literally been driving pretty much solid ever since I got it. I blooming love that car. In this horrible weather, when you're leaving the unit late at night and it's freezing cold, you can't beat getting in that truck with the warm heated seats and uh, wafting along. But no, I took home the Suzuki Swift last night and it has reminded me, driving it back in again this morning, what an amazing little car these are. I just can't recommend them highly enough. If you're... If you're on a bit of a limited budget, you want something that'll do everything, it'll do the school runs, it'll do the shopping, it'll do the commuting back and forth to work. But when you want to go for a hoon, you just want a big grin on your face, you cannot beat these Zuki Swifts. Uh, I don't know what the later ones are like, I haven't driven one. The, mine is the five speed, I'm probably trying to recommend getting a six speed. That's the only thing I'd knock this for, is uh, that it is pretty high revving when it's in fifth gear. But what a brilliant little car. Now you've got to bear in mind, this car has now been with me for, it must be nearly three years, I'd say. It's now past 100,000 miles. It's been a track day car. It's been a loan car to various different customers. Um, and it's been my sort of run runabout car. And the thing has been bulletproof reliable. So and like I say, I've thrashed this thing on track, driven it down to the track, thrashed it driven it back again i've lent it like say out to people as loan cars and you never know how people are going to drive them and it survived all of that without hesitation the only thing that's ever happened is it's popped up a light for the catalytic converter a couple of times but you clear it and it goes away for months on end just absolutely brilliant car so i'm what i'm saying to you is if you're looking for something like this at the moment, go and grab one now before everybody finds out and the prices skyrocket because they're just absolutely brilliant that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Just a quick reminder, it's the last few days for you to get your tickets for the Citroen C1 raffle. We are giving away the 2018 Citroen C1 Flare with only 40,000 miles. We're going to put a brand new MOT on it for you and give you a six month warranty. Tickets are just two pounds and we're supporting the veterans charity with this raffle. So we've raised about just short of 15 grand i think it is this year so far for various charities this time round we're supporting the veterans charity i'll put a link in the video description down below don't forget if you don't want the car i'm going to bundle up a load of top don who support the raffles diagnostics machines about a thousand pounds or more worth of diagnostics machines jump packs that kind of stuff to give to you and then i will sell the car off and give the proceeds of that to the charity as well so whether you want to get involved just to support the charity or you want to get involved because you want the car you want to get involved because you want the top don gear then i say the link is in the video description down below oh and also don't forget please check below are you subscribed to chops garage it costs you absolutely nothing to subscribe to a channel all it does is notify you when new videos come out so please you might think you're subscribed but you might not be so please check the subscribe down below make sure you're tagged to subscribe to the channel because it really does help thanks a lot see you on the next one